And then Bonnie's we get we're, we're doing the sandwiching in there. Yeah, we are. I thought I'd make a remark about turning on the AC, but other than that. Well, you can tell them that, that it was not, the switch didn't work. It's okay. I'll put it in there.
Morning, everyone. Good morning. Glad to see so many smiling faces. A little humid today, and for some reason the AC is not working. Uh, we apologize for that. I hope all of you got to see our beautiful doors. Glad to have them up again. I want to welcome all of you that are here in the sanctuary and all of you on Zoom uh, that are participating in the service today. Uh, a, a reminder to those watching on Zoom, it is a communion Sunday, so grab your elements so that you can uh, uh, celebrate communion with us. The words weren't coming. <laughs> a very special welcome today to uh, Pastor Whitney Scoville. Thank you so much for being here with us today for leading worship. And uh, we're also happy to have Dory back. It's a welcome face to see. <clears throat> there are uh, two short but important announcements in your bulletin, a reminder that the fellowship team continues to need hosts. So the sign-up sheet is as it always is on the fellowship bulletin board. So please take advantage of that, if you will. And uh, there's also a list of items needed for the food shelf. We've got several important birthdays coming up this week. So uh, let's mention those. On Tuesday, Doug Dupree and Jim Friday. Jim. You'll be celebrating your birthday. And as I hear from your wife, we're going to be celebrating it after in the fellowship hall. So she wants everybody to come in and help celebrate Jim's birthday. She's got so much food, so much food. So come in and help her uh, get rid of that. <laughs> uh, on, one, on Wednesday, we celebrate Bonnie's birthday. <laughs> We're going to take a little boat trip, aren't we, for a day. Celebrate your birthday. It'll be good. Oh, we're coming back now. Oh, well. And also Adriana Mulford. And on Friday, a Jennifer, not here today, Jennifer celebrates her birthday. And next Sunday, uh, Dennis Dupre, but he's not here either. Gee whiz. Good morning, all. It is a joy to be here with you in worship today. 
I pass by most Sunday mornings. My family lives in Hilton and our home church is in Chai Lai. So I wave uh, just about most, most Sundays um, that I'm at Chai Lai unless I'm guest preaching somewhere else. So it's good to see you all and not just the outside of your building. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for this place. Thank you for these people who gather here to worship in your name. Holy Spirit, come. Bless us with your presence. Spirit, move. Open our hearts and our ears. Ready our faith to serve you. The Lord be with you. Take a moment to center our hearts as we listen to the prelude. Please uh, stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Great God, we gather to hear your word and to worship you. We are, we are here, here to, to worship, worship you. you. We battle competing demands, growing worries and needs. Yet in this moment, we choose to worship our God, creator, healer, great counselor. Help, Help us prepare, prepare our, our hearts, hearts and minds. minds. As good students prepare their backpacks and lay out their clothes, Lord, Lord help, help us to be ready, ready to study, study your living your word. word. As expecting parents prepare every inch of their home and carefully listen to the changes in mama's body, help, help us, us to keep watch. watch. The Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. Do not be afraid. Holy Lord, one, Help us, Help us to be, be watchful. watchful. Help, Help us, us to see the Holy Spirit, Spirit move. Help, Help us to be ready, ready to serve. serve. Help, Help us to be ready, ready to love. love. Amen. Amen. The first hymn today is Take My Life, which is page uh, 391 in your hymnal.
You may be seated. Understand that we take a moment to be still. So I invite you to take a deep breath. Settle in. To shake off the weak, the thoughts, the worries, the to-do list. And be here. Yes, your bodies are in the pews. Now let's make sure our minds and hearts are here too. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Luke chapter 12, verses 32 through 40. Holy Spirit, in these moments of stillness, come. Illuminate these words. Speak to us. May my words be your words. May we hear your spirit move. Speak to us, Holy One. So, <clears throat> starting at verse 32, we have, do not be afraid, little flock. Your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail. Where no thief comes near, no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Be dressed and ready for service and keep your lamps burning like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. The word of God for the people to God. Thanks be to God. Sorry, as I get used to the microphone distancing and the, I know where I will be tweaked as we go. So as I said, it is so good to be with you all here in worship today. Our scripture reading comes with this push and pull, a heavy dose of do not worry and be watchful. Okay, these two things, push and pull. Do not worry, be watchful. So me as a mother can say, or at least try to say, I will not worry about my child falling off her bike, but I'm gonna watch really, really close. <laughs> sometimes I worry and sometimes I get distracted, typically by her two-year-old brother, right? So there, and those are good distractions, right? It's a push and pull of keeping watch and not worrying. There is a sweet spot between those two things. Now, these words of our reading today start with, do not be afraid, little flock. Your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Essentially, friends, do not worry. God wants to bless you. God wants to give you the kingdom. So with that starting place, remember that. Because as the scripture steps into instructions on how to keep watch, I want you to remember 
that this message is not to stir shame or fear or anxiety because you are loved. And God wants to bless you. And that's why Jesus starts these very words with, do not worry. God loves you. So the instructions or the words that Jesus is speaking to his disciples in this reading today, start with that, do not be afraid, do not worry, and transition into getting ready. Now we are told, get ready as in be dressed ready for service. Awake, ready to immediately open that door as soon as someone knocks. Hmm. And though we know we must be ready, we are also told that the Son of Man will come at an unexpected time. Now, I think about a few things that come up here when I think about things happening in unexpected times. Our scripture reading references a wedding. We hear this a lot in the good news. Weddings paint a picture that we're familiar with. Now, I think about my best friend's wedding. I was her matron of honor. We were at her mother's house. We were getting ready. There was a timeline. We were doing the things on the timeline. We were excited. We were joyful. Things were progressing as they should. And then the photographer. No one was dressed. We had run around, the, the energy shifted from joyful excitement as we slowly do our routines to, oh no, move it. <laughs> get dressed, get your makeup done, get your jewelry on, find your shoes, it's time to go. You know, pregnancies follow a similar analogy of being ready. So for expectant parents, we're given due dates. And as you may know, due dates should probably be more accurately due months, because anything goes. <laughs> it would probably more accurately equip us for that anticipation of that little one. So I have two kids, a uh, McKinley who is four, and Ethan who will be two in, September. And I was told by all of the doctors and all of the midwives, second deliveries come earlier. Second, I already have some mama shaking her head. Mm -hmm. You know what's going to happen, right? Second deliveries are often shorter and faster, right? So you labor less, you push less. And I was banking on it, right? Dear Lord, may it be so. So my daughter was seven days after her due date. My son, my body, was telling me, keep watch. All of the things were happening, right? And then all of the things would stop. This went from week 37, week 38, to 39, to 40, to 41. He was supposed to come earlier. He didn't. Nine days after my due date, my nine pound baby boy came on 9-9, September 9th. <laughs> oh, so as my pregnant self at that time, I was trying so hard not to worry. And I was definitely being watchful. So how does that translate to our lives as believers? As Christians, we are called to expect the return of Christ, to not worry about it, but to be watchful and ready. So I'm curious, my friends, if we were to translate to that to our faith, this concept of our faith being awake and ready to serve. Can you, I'm going to ask for some participation. Hope that's cool. It's kind of my thing. Um, what does your faith being awake look like? Give me a word or a phrase, a couple of sentences. What on earth could that possibly look like? Your faith being awake. Yeah. 
Say that again. Engaged. Yes, you're engaged. Engaged in what? Someone whose faith is awake, they're engaging in what practices? So many things. Listening, prayer, scripture, hope. They have hope. Yes. They're, they're what? They're doing. They're living their faith. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when I think about faith being awake, I think about all of those things. Those are beautiful things. I also think about our ears being awake to the Holy Spirit. I think about our hearts being awake to the movement of God. I think about our muscles. Are our muscles awake or do they need to be woken up so that we can get out of the pew and into the mission field where is just beyond these very doors? Are we awake? Hmm. Be dressed. Now, when I think about being dressed as in my faith being dressed, I think about the scripture from Ephesians chapter 6, the armor of God. Are you familiar with this? So the armor of God, right? It talks about putting on the shield of faith, the belt of truth, of carrying righteousness, of feet of faith, the word of God. It is putting on all of those things each day. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God. Can you get up each morning and put on those things and try to be truthful, try to do what is right, try to carry your faith out into the world? Are you ready to serve? What does that look like? If your faith is ready to serve, give me words or phrases. Shout them out nice and loud. Ready to serve. That's a trick question. <laughs> it's really not, right? If someone says they're hungry, are you willing to share some food? If someone says they need clothes, are you willing to share? Now, I know you have your clothing closet here. I am thankful for that. As you probably all know, the resources on the west side of the community are more limited. I refer to you, your communi community here often as a social worker. So thank you for that work, for that faith ready to serve. Will you go and visit the people who need visitors, those who are imprisoned or are alone or isolated. These things are easy to say and hard to do, but the opportunity to serve and to love will come. The question is, will you be ready? Will you be willing? Will you be awake enough to do? Unlike weddings, we, we don't have an exact timeline or, or due date. And so I ask, when we know that we need to do these things, how will we? Or will we say things like, I'll serve others when I have more time. I'll give when I have this much in my bank account or in my home. Or this one's my I don't know if I call it my favorite, it's kind of a weird thing to say is your favorite, right? But I hear this a lot, right? I'll talk about God in my faith when I know a little bit more. I'll talk about God in my faith when I feel just a little bit more comfortable. I'm going to share my faith when the time is better. Later. Friends, the time is now. Now we are to serve. Now we are to share the love of Christ. Now we are to be the light and hope in this world. We are told to not be worried and to be watchful. Christ is coming again. God wants to bless you. And when Christ comes again, I ask this question of myself and all of us here. 
And those joining us on Zoom today, when Christ comes again, will he find your faith awake, dressed, and ready to serve? Now, we have discussed some of the ways that that can look like today. So I invite you to be open to that, to being open to be engaged in new ways, to be praying for different things and new prayers at new times with new people. I invite you to be open to the awakening of your faith, open to serving and to being faithful in deeper ways. This is my closing prayer for all of us. Mighty God, healer and maker of heaven and earth, take our fear and our anxiety. Help us to be brave. Help us to keep watch. Help us to serve, to love, to bring your almighty light into this world. May our faith be awake. May our faith be dressed. And may our faith be ready to serve. In your holy name, amen. Will you stand as you are able and join us in hymn 369? I'm going to live so God can use me. Good, loving Lord knows the things on our hearts and our minds before the words even meet our lips. And yet we join together in confession. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious Lord, you have blessed us with freedom, freedom to follow or to turn away, 
Freedom to love or to hate. Freedom to heal or to hurt. You ask that we only follow your ways, loving our neighbors as ourselves. In the midst of our turbulent lives, help us to see you you see. Open our eyes and heart to you, O oh God. Children, you are loved. God's grace is abundant. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call on you. Thanks be to you, O Christ. As far from the east is from the west, so far has he removed the transgressions from us. Thanks be to you, O Christ. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Will you come to dinner? Will you join the feast? Will you sit at this table? Yes, you come. All are welcome, all are invited, all are included. The food of the spirit is sweet. The texture of grace is divine. The table is set with love and life. Joy, forgiveness, and healing, they'll be there. Dear friends, come. You are invited to the Lord's table, for all things are ready. The Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thank you, O God, for sending us your son. He lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death and then rose to a new life that we might live and all creation be restored. We give thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night before he died, took bread, blessed it, and after giving thanks, broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, And he blessed it. And he said, this is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink of it, all of you. And whenever you eat and you drink, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering your boundless love, Jesus Christ, in bread and in cup, we turn our hearts to you. We remember and we give ourselves to you to live for God in joy and praise. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Now, I know we have our cups, so we will start with the bread. Uh,
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Take and eat. As you get your wrapper on. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Remain in me and you will bear fruit. Take, drink, come to me and never be hungry. Believe in me and never thirst. God of abundance with this bread and cup of salvation, you have united us in Christ, making us one with all of your people. Now send us forth in the power of the Holy Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we will collect our offering. Lord bless this offering that we give gifts from our pockets, our hearts, and our hands. Lord, we give these things to you. Bless the gifts given in these offering plates today. Bless the gifts given of our heart and of our hands and the things that will be given throughout the week ahead of us. We trust these things to you. Amen. So prayers of the people, this is one question I didn't ask. So if you have a particular way of doing this, tell me now, or you could just share, are there any joy or concerns today? Awesome, thank you. Prayers for my friend Diane, who will be having spinal surgery tomorrow. Okay. Lord, we lift up Diane. Bless the surgeon's hands. Keep her safe. 
bring healing. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you. Any other joints or concerns? Good morning. Good news. After three and a half weeks, Tim's vital signs have stabilized and we can start looking for a rehab center. Wonderful. So uh, Tim's vital signs have stabilized. So thank you, Lord, for that miracle. Continue with him on his healing journey. We pray. Thanks be to God. Lord, hear our prayer. See, okay, so at Chai Lai, we for joy, we say thanks be to God. And then if it's a concern, Lord, hear our prayer. All of it's prayers. So I'll, I'll, I'm down with anything you pray, folks. That's good. Do your concern. This is a concern. Our good friend, Denise Schwerz, is in the hospital. Uh, she oh, no. rolled her mini bike, a little motorcycle thing, on the bridge as we were all gathering for Canal Days last week. She's got a whole mess of problems going on. Every day we think she's going to come home, and every day something else happens. And she's ready to come home. But for the grace of God, they're still taking care of her. Yeah. So for Denise, Lord, we lift her up to you. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and all of the staff taking care of her. We ask for your healing in Ponto so she can come home. <laughs> Lord, hear our prayers. Good morning. This is Denise on Zoom. Can you hear me? Um, just want to say uh, thank you to uh, Tim Cassidy and uh, Al Webster for uh, all the work that they did in the parking lot and for all the the, the behind the scenes work that uh, Al does uh, to you know as chair of the trust <laughs> um, to you know, keep our uh, grounds and, and structure, you know, all uh, up in good shape. Also, uh, thank you to my wife, Sandy, for the uh, unbelievable spread. I'm sure it's out there. Uh, she always goes way overboard, uh, you know, and uh, I hope everyone stays because there's, uh, she always does, makes more than uh, needed. So thank you uh, to everyone for all the birth birthday wishes also. Thank you. Praise for birthdays, praise for wives, your wife and wives everywhere, if I may, and for trustees, the good service of keeping up our building in our faith community. Thanks be to God. Morning. I'm on Zoom. Can you hear me? Say that again. You just asked is there anyone on Zoom who has a joy or a concern? I see someone waving their hand. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Can you hear me? No, you can't hear me. I don't think they can. Yeah, I guess not, huh? Uh, Try chat. OK, yeah. Uh, I think we can hear I, you now. Can you hear me now? No? No, nope, not yet. Hmm. Can anybody in church here on Zoom? No, apparently not. <laughs> I thought I'd try on this end. <laughs> You type it in the chat. Sometimes that works yeah. as well. I'm happy to read that. I guess I can't type fast enough. <laughs> Go, Denise. Go, Denise. <laughs> Pressure. Oh, I see a chat here. I'm going to need your help, though, because I can't quite see it on that screen. I just found out that my good friend Kathy's mom is in hospice. Okay. We lift up Kathy's mom who is in hospice. Lord, hear our prayers. 
Anyone else? <clears throat> Okay, and her daughter is her hospice nurse. Oh, wow, okay. Father, we lift up her daughter as well as she is caring for her mother in hospice as she transitions on to more life. Holy Spirit, be with that family. Equip them with peace and love and endurance during this transition. Lord. Can you hear, hear anybody on Zoom yet? Okay. Hmm? Are we set there? Okay. No. <laughs> Gracious Father, you have heard the prayers spoken and the prayers on our hearts. Heavenly Father, I ask that you give us strength for the days ahead, that you bring healing to heart, body, mind, and soul, that you bring joy and freedom from shame and guilt that we have through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we'll join together in praying, trusting in you, Lord, that you have us, for you are the Almighty One who says, I take hold of your right hand and say, do not fear, I will help you. And so together we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you stand as you are able and join us in hymn 434. Today we are called to be disciples.
do not be afraid, little flock. Your father is pleased to give you the kingdom of heaven. May you go from this place with peace and love and joy. May you be awakened in faith. May you be dressed with the word and peace and love of God. And may you be ready to serve as Christ calls you. Go in peace. And may the joy and the light of Christ be with you forevermore. Amen.